Now, I know it's only November, but let me tell you, in the McLaughlin house, that's our house, Christmas is here. Has anybody else got Christmas in their house yet? No? <laughs> no one? <laughs> Christmas is like the number one topic in our house. We have three kids, six, three, and one. You've never seen such excitement in one building. They're so excited. I don't really mind because I love Christmas. I'm a big Christmas fan. Having kids has made Christmas like a hundred times more fun. You should see, Brian and I went shopping the other day. In fact, it was witnessed by some of you who bumped into it in the mouth. We, went, we came out of John Lewis with huge bags of toys going, <laughs> like Nerf guns and Playmobil. And Christmas is so much fun when you've got kids. But actually, we are the biggest kids ever. Brad got his first Nerf gun well before we had kids, I'd like to say. <laughs> so the kids are super excited. Phoebe, she's my middle one, she's three. And uh, she thinks it's Christmas. She thinks that's what Christmas is, that we get presents. Uh, we go to church and we eat crisps. That is her. <laughs> That's her Christmas plan. And I think it's not a bad one. But Christmas is amazing. The conversations you can get into about Christmas are incredible. I was out the other day talking to somebody about Christmas and they said, oh, and I, well, I said I'm going to go to church on Christmas Day. And they said, oh, you still believe that? <laughs> and I was like, um, still? <laughs> How, still? What do you mean still? And it's, it's really funny, isn't it? Sometimes these doubts creep in and it's, I was like, yeah, still, I still believe in Christmas. Of course I do. But actually, it's extra, extra specially brilliant. Christmas is extra specially brilliant when you're a Christian. Because Christmas is like amazing and the icing on the cake is the presents and the fun and the family and stuff. But the cake part of Christmas, the cake part is that the creator of the world came down to earth to be with us. That is just incredible. That's mind-blowing. So when this woman said to me, still, in a kind of oh, cute sort of way, you still believe in that, I felt this little tug in my heart saying, come on Esther, grow up now. This is for kids, isn't it? You know, this little back of my mind thought that, you know, you get to be a sheep in the nativity and you grow up and you move on. And that's kind of what was nagging at the back of my mind when this woman was talking to me just for a minute. And the thing that I really felt was just a little bit of doubt. We're not really supposed to talk about doubt, are we? You know, it's a bit of a taboo subject. We're supposed to kind of sing along and pretend everything's okay, but actually, lots of us are full of doubt. We are all, at times, have doubt about Christianity. That's just the way it is. I don't know whether you came in here as a big skeptic today. Some of you have come here tonight thinking, well, you know, it's a load of rubbish, but I quite like beanbags. And I quite like that boy over there, and the sweets are all right. And my mum made me go, but you won't get me into that stuff. But if you think that that's you and you're the only one with doubts, actually think again, because everybody in this room has had doubts about Christianity at one time or another. You've come to a room full of people that doubt sometimes, and that's even me. I doubt this, this stuff sometimes, and I'm not supposed to stand at the front and say that, surely. <laughs> but actually, that's true. I do. My Christmas conversation the other day was one of my more light-hearted doubting moments in my life. I've had some bigger ones than that, when people die, or when there are huge disasters, or when big trouble comes. Actually, yeah, I, as a big, fully grown person, I get doubts sometimes. So how come I'm still here? How come I'm still here talking about Jesus, if I get these doubts? How do I get past them? I've had a lot of Christian influences in my life. I grew up in a Christian house, my parents were Christians, dragged to church every week. I've been to so many youth camps, so many things like Soul Survivor. I was the first Soul Survivor, <laughs> the very first one. Youth groups and loads of stuff, but at the end of the day, what do I believe? What do I actually believe deep down, right at the core of me? What do I believe? How do I know, without all these things, that God is real, that this is true? At the end of the day, what convinces me there's a God? <laughs> and a divine noise. <laughs> In the middle of these doubts, there are five things that I come back to and I'm going to tell you what they are. I'm going to stick it up. Doubt. One. Okay. I believe at the very core of me that I was created. I do. This is my number three. Just as she's born, only this summer. She was, I find it so hard to believe that this could be an accident. This is a perfect tiny person that has just been born. She's about four minutes old here. She's screaming because the doctor's picking her up and doing horrible things to her. <laughs> But actually, I've never seen this so clearly until I had my own kids. That actually, I remember holding each of them for the first time and seeing this tiny, perfect human, so unique, and thinking each time, like every time, as if I have kids all the time, three times. <laughs> I remember feeling, there must be a God. 
God, there has to be God. Somebody created this perfect thing. How could this be chance? This little person was created completely unique. But she's so different to the other two. How can that be? But you were once a little person like that who was created. You know, if you think about it. I think we were designed. I think we are unique. Even ident identical twins are unique. You're one in seven billion. Isn't that amazing? And to me, I just can't see how we're an accident. In the Bible, it says in Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. And I think the same is true for us. I believe he formed us and he knows us with the work of his hands. That's one thing I firmly believe. I believe above all else that I'm created. Second thing, I also believe the world was created. The other day I went for a run before sunrise because I was awake. And I left the house in the dark and it was a horrible, horrible rainy morning and I'm running along and I got as far as I wanted to go. I turned around to come home and out of the darkness, bursting out of the darkness, was this amazing sunrise. It was like bright red and orange like this, but times a billion. And it, it literally, in a kind of really cheesy movie style way, it took my breath away. But at, probably also the running may have taken my breath away. <laughs> but actually, the sky is incredible, isn't it? You look up at the sky, whatever it's doing, it's changing all the time. It's totally amazing. And I, it speaks to the core of me that there must be a God when I look at the sky. <coughs> I'm convinced that the world was really thought through, designed and created and crafted. I don't know if you've been watching Frozen Pat Planet. Show those cute polar bears, Isaac. Go on there. Go next one. Oh, look. Anyone watching Frozen Planet? Yeah. yeah. It is amazing, isn't it? And that's just one tiny part of our massive world. You know, I was talking to my grandfather a few days before he died. My grandfather lived to the grand old age of 94, which is really old. He ate, I'd just like to say, he ate a bar of dairy milk this big every day. That was his secret. I kid you not, a whole bar every day. He didn't eat a lot else, but there you go. It was an advert for dairy milk. So he was 94, and he was a few days away from dying, and he knew that. And we're having a conversation. He was not a Christian his whole life. 94 years of never thinking that there was a God. But as we're talking, he said, you know, I really can't deny that there's a God at the end of the day, and I really am at the end of the day. When I look at the wings of a dragonfly, go back to my dragonfly. Look, the wings of a dragonfly are incredible. Someone, he said, someone must have designed that with absolute precision. Now this guy had lived through the war, he'd had children, he'd seen so much. 94 years of an opportunity to meet God, and at the end, what convinced him? A tiny dragonfly. That is amazing. We can walk blindly through this life. But 94, we can bump into the creator of the universe. I'm so glad I bumped into him already. 